Tonight, a preteen murder plot. Cops say an 11-year-old girl and her teenage boyfriend tried to kill her mother. They're accused of pouring gasoline on this woman's bed and lighting her on fire. Now mom's in the hospital and the kids are in jail. I'm Jim Moray from Inside Edition, sitting in tonight for Jane Velez Mitchell. Tonight, a crime that will leave you shocked, not just by the brutality, but by the ages of the suspects. Police say an 11-year-old girl and her 15-year-old boyfriend plotted to kill the girl's mom. They're accused of torching the woman's bedroom yesterday while she was asleep in her bed. The 11-year-old girl and her 15-year-old boyfriend uh, plotted to basically set the mom on fire and to leave her there to die. Um, after they got some gasoline and they doused her bed and her bedroom floor, uh, they ignited it and they left the house. Police say the night before the fire, the mom confronted her daughter about stealing her cigarettes. The victim, Nancy Broadhead, turns 48 today. She escaped the fire after a smoke alarm woke her up. Police found her in the front yard suffering from severe burns and smoke inhalation. She is expected to survive. Meanwhile, the girl and her boyfriend are both charged with attempted murder and arson. The boy is also accused with grand theft auto. Police say after setting the fire, the couple took off in Broadhead's car. The kids may have also stolen her credit cards, which were found in the car. Police have been to the Broadhead home seven other times in the past year. The victim herself has an extensive rap sheet. More on that part of the story in a moment. But first, I want to welcome my guests. Michelle Borba, educational psychologist and author of the Big Book of Parenting. Uh, big book, big, I'm sorry, Big Book of Parenting Solutions, excuse me. Janie Weintraub, criminal defense attorney. Steve Cardian, former criminal investigator. Stacey Honowitz, supervisor of the Sex Crimes Unit in the Florida Prosecutor's Office. She is also author of the book, My Privates Are Private. Boy, in this case, already has a long criminal history. In just the past year, he's been arrested at least five times, seven times since 2003. He was accused of battery at the age of eight. This past fall, he was arrested twice in one week. The charges were domestic battery and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. How is the juvenile system supposed to handle troubled kids like this? Uh, let's go to Steve Cardian, former criminal investigator. Uh, Jim, you know, in my 30 years in law enforcement, I, I worked just north of New York City in Westchester County, and I, I, I had a lot of dealings with troubled youth from New York City. And I've investigated rapes against eight-year-old girls. I was even the, the, the supervisor in charge of the youngest child ever charged as an adult with murder. And we see these horrendous crimes, and, and I interview them after the fact, and they commit these horrendous crimes. They turn around, have a bowl of cereal, watch cartoons like it never happened. The lack of empathy, the lack of remorse is, it, remorse is concerning. As a father, as a law enforcement officer, as a martial artist that teaches troubled kids, I, I, I wonder, can they ever be rehabilitated? Police say that they've been called to the Broadhead home seven other times in the last year the victim nancy broadhead herself has been arrested nine times she was convicted of child neglect dui indecent exposure and resisting arrest in 2008 she was arrested for child abuse and battery those charges were dropped michelle borba as a psychologist when you look at a home like this is it a surprise that the daughter would potentially turn to a life of crime no it's not a surprise at all if somebody doesn't give this child a, a need Plus, uh, as what Steve would say, there's really what is called a moral core that would stop violent behavior patterns. Number one is empathy on how that child is treated at a very early age. If not treated well, that begins to shut down, which is what you're seeing. Number two is conscience. That child had no remorse, is what was Steve was saying as a result. But it's also a, a buildup of a child on how you're being treated right from wrong. But the third thing is a break system that helps that kid stop and think before you act. We already know that at age 11, and that still isn't formed. It's not formed until we now know about the age of 12. And where are his parents? What's a 15-year-old exactly. boy doing with an 11-year-old exactly. child? I mean, <laughs> they're both children, but I have an 11-year-old. I can't imagine the difference between 11 and 15 is huge at this age. Well, and you're not yeah, trying to be drunk Steve, with the kids. Yeah, Steve, Jane, Steve, of course. Wait, hold on. Steve, I, Steve wants may, to chime in. Steve. It, it yeah. hasn't been mentioned, but I suspect that we're going to find out in all likelihood that there was some sort of a disapproval rating by the mother with the 15-year-old girl. I'm sorry. That was my girl that was my the, instinct the as well. I, I mean, I suspect, I think Steve's right. I think that perhaps the mom said, I don't want you seeing this boy. He's too old for you. I don't think it was really over a pack of cigarettes that this argument Jim, occurred. Jim, can I, I ask I mean, you a question, yeah, I, I, I think that, sure. I think that may, it could have very well prompted or at least a exaggerated this behavior and caused him to act out or suggest to the 11-year-old girl that they do that based upon him or her 
being uh, chastised for, for stealing the cigarettes that morning. Statistically speaking, do you think if it's all true about this mother, that she drove drunk in the car with the child, that she neglected the child, that she abused the child, do you really think she took the time to tell the child, I don't want you seeing a 15-year-old boy? But at, least, but at least I could wrap my head around that, whereas I can't um, over a pack of cigarettes. You see? Right, I right. Mean, I, can, it, I understand this is that. So, this is so removed from my reality, and I have a 12-year-old son. Look, I just can't, I, I can't understand this. I'm sorry we're out of time on this segment. Thank you so much to our guests. A lot to talk about here, clearly.